For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. Somebody say amen. Hey, hey, hey. Wow. Luke chapter 2. Wow. Hey. Oh, hey. He's here. Uh, He's here. We're going to be preaching a Christmas story here, the story of the Savior. Think about that. Think about the, the song you were just saying. Think about the, when the angels sang. Can you imagine? The, the perfect pitch, the perfect everything in harmony. They, wow. Uh, I tell you, what a, what a, what a night that <sighs> I'd like to have been those shepherds there. Hey. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. That'll help you. That'll help you when COVID comes and trials come. Just go back and remember the, the glorious night that Jesus came. Verse 8, chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, dropping down to verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Father, would you help us this morning? You've already sensed the great presence of God. Please continue it and, and, and bless and honor your word, Lord. We are unworthy, but nonetheless, you're worthy. So for your sake and for your glory, your honor and praise, oh, and we give all glory to you this morning. Would you be in this message? Would you work with this message? Would you help us to preach it as only you can do? In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I'm telling you, think about what a story that is. You know, we read it and we get, it becomes almost old hat. And it should never do that. It ought to be exciting every time you pick up the Word of God, every time you read something in it, it ought to excite you. Uh, pray that God will excite you when you get the book of, uh, out and start reading it. Especially stories like this just it really bless my heart. I thought about the, the angels and what it must have, look like the uh, angel of the Lord first of all and uh, the glory that was shining about him but can you imagine when all of them came in and seen <laughs> I personally think it was as far as the eye could see in every direction I believe there were angels millions of them I don't believe you could see a place in the sky where there wasn't an angel or oh, what those shepherds saw at that time it, it uh, made them fear at first and then it made them excited and they said let's go now Boy, now, we, we, if we're going to do anything for Jesus, I keep talking about this, let's do it now. Yeah. Because we're running out of time. And uh, what a time while you're out shopping and buying gifts or having a party or something with somebody, whatever. Be sure to speak a word for Christ and, and hand out tracts and do what you can. But I think about the Savior has come, I've entitled the message, and the Savior's one that saves from evil. 
when it saves from danger. And, and I love a, a good story with a happy ending. I love, you know, see the news where somebody was uh, lost out in the woods or something and they found him finally and found him safe and sound. And, uh, some years ago there was a child fell in a well and boy everybody was praying. And they were working diligently and he, they got him out. And what a wonderful thing that is. Sometimes you hear somebody falling through the ice. Boy, that's a, that's a dangerous one. Usually they don't make it through that. But sometimes they make it through. And uh, they, they're not uh, frozen to death or anything. And, uh, but yet more than that, think about all those that are rescued. Think about Jesus and what he came to rescue us from. And uh, much worse than, than being down a well or in, in an icy lake or something like that. Not, not from the, the tragedy of death, but from the second death, which is hell. He came to save, seek and to save that which is lost, the Bible says. And saved from that torment we talked about last week and that thirst that was there. And that loneliness and that darkness. And we said there were flames there. He was tormented in those flames. And uh, oh, what a Savior. Well, number one, the Savior brings light. Look there in verse 9. That's the first thing that happened, wasn't it? And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory, notice that the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid it was dark, pitch black dark. I personally believe it's probably as dark as it ever got. You know, you probably couldn't see a hand in front of your face. And all of a sudden, wow, the sky lights up with the glory of God. And I thought about that. That's the first thing that happened for the shepherds to find the Savior, is they had to have light, didn't they? There was light. The first thing that God did was show them light. Listen, the first thing that happens when a person is lost and on his way to hell, uh, the first thing that happens, he's got to have light. He's got to get his mind on the fact that he's a sinner, that the Bible says all have sinned come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. And we understand that from the Bible. But nonetheless, uh, until a person... Now, you remember your own, your own uh, story and your own uh, uh, history there in that uh, we weren't looking for God any more than Saul was when he, God spoke to him and what did he do? Shine light on him, you know? And that's the way it is. We have to have light. We have to realize that we are not saved. Oh, I'm telling you, when he announced the birth of Christ, the glory of the Lord shone round about him. Psalm 27 and verse 1 uh, says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? You don't have to be afraid once you realize that it's the Lord shining that light. And when they heard from the angel and saw they calmed them down there, he said in Psalm 36 and verse 9, For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light uh, we shall see light. In his light. When he comes and speaks to you and draws you by the Spirit of God, and it's like giving light to that person, suddenly they can see. Uh, isn't it amazing that, that uh, in a lost sinner's life all these things are true? He's got to, to see his need of salvation. He's got to see that he's lost and uh, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You remember John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But until God's light shines on you, you'll be just in darkness. And I was. And you could say the same thing. We need to give the testimony of that. And it's the Lord that looks for us. He comes out seeking us. We're not go looking for him. You say, well, hey, I went to church. I was looking to get saved. Yeah, but he caught you way out there yonder somewhere else and began to draw you way before you got to church. And you may not have been saved in church, but uh, I was and some were. But oh, my friend, he, he caught you way down yonder in the wilderness. <laughs> That's where he got me. And began to show his light on me. Began to speak to my heart. Uh, we used to have a saying. Uh, brother, have you seen the light? You remember that a long time ago? That's talking about our physical brothers now. We're not talking about brothers in Christ. We're talking about people talking to a lost person. But they would say, brother, have you seen the light? You know, as a, as a fellow member of the human race, you know, have you seen the light? Oh, wow. Have you received the uh, uh, have you seen your need of salvation to receive Christ as your personal Savior? That's kind of what they were talking about. The Bible says in uh, John chapter 1 and verse 4, In him was life that is in Christ. And the life was the light of men. I, I thought about how even the world uh, pictures that thing. 
Have you ever noticed even in cartoons and little things like that, when they want a picture, somebody seeing uh, their way through, they have a light bulb and it turns on. Have you ever seen that? And a little light bulb turns on and they'll draw a little light bulb out there. Yeah, yeah. Even the world recognizes that. You've got to have a light in order to suddenly see the truth, you know. Uh, suddenly it'll dawn on you, whatever they're trying to say. But suddenly it's got to dawn on you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. The only way. There's no other Lord. There's no other Savior. He said himself, there's none beside me. Now I'm going to tell you something. There's none beside him. Nobody's sitting beside him. No, Jesus is beside him, but he's God too. So, amen. John chapter 6, verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up the last day. He likens it unto being the shepherd that leaves the ninety and nine in the wilderness and goes out to seek that one sheep that's lost. And when he finds it, he comes back and rejoices over it. You know what? The Bible says we're rejoicing in heaven over one, one sinner. Amen. Every time a person gets saved, God rejoices in it. He used to say the angels rejoice, but the Bible didn't say that. It said it, there is joy in the presence of angels. Who's in the presence of angels? God's doing the rejoicing. Man, Jesus, man, they're having the time up there. They're so happy because he loved us so much that he died for us. So, boy, when one gets saved, don't you think he'd get happy in heaven? I believe that crowd that's up there with him gets happy too. I'm going to tell you something. I believe people has gone on here. Uh, folks from this church we were just talking about a while ago. I mean, we lost over the years and slipped on into glory and some of them in nursing homes now and boy I tell you all my friends he brings light he has to bring light first number two the savior brings joy look at verse 10 and the angel said unto them fear not for behold I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people Indeed. all people wow all people everywhere anybody that you meet could get saved. Doesn't say they're going to, but they could. So you don't know that, and I don't know that. So think about this. We, we don't need pick and choose. We need to, to just give the gospel out, don't we? Just give the gospel. It's like sowing the seed. Just go out there and sow it. And if you sow down a, a place with tracts or something, they, there's many testimonies. People used to hand out tracts all the time. And get, they were. And, of course, you can speak a word, too. And I want to put in a word for those big blue and red books back there. Boy, they are good. Uh, the book of Romans. And they show in pictures how to get saved. Right? First four, five, six pages there. Praise God. Take one of those. But number two, the Savior brings joy. And not only joy, but great joy. You know, I, I thought back to the day that I got saved. Man, I had great. I didn't have joy. I had great joy the day I got saved. It was great. Wow. When the weight of my sins were lifted. Think about a prisoner that's on death row and suddenly his sentence is commuted and he's set free. That's how that's how happy you ought to be, even happier than that for that matter because that's just physical death. Oh, I'm telling you. It's not the things you can accumulate in this life that brings joy. You you may have joy in them. You go out and buy that new car and man, you just, you driving down the road and you just have the joy with that thing. And then at the end of the month, the payment comes due. You know, it lost your joy right there, I'll tell you. <laughs> got, got stuck the pin in your glue, didn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things won't bring joy for very long, okay? Or uh, worse yet, I, I had just bought a car one time, brand new, and I don't know if I had it a week or two or not, not, not even a month, I don't think. And we took it to a place to eat one day and came back out and somebody had keyed it all the way down the side. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm telling you. Uh, that, that, that'll lose your joy, right, Craig? You see, joy is not found in things. And it took me a few minutes to get over that. <laughs> but they, so, I had to do some praying. <laughs> but when I did, I remember joy's not in that car. Joy's in Jesus. What we're celebrating now, the greatest thing that ever happened. Yeah. Wow, these shepherds, we, we believe they were... Uh, temple shepherds. We believe they were keeping the temple sheep for the sacrifices. Most likely. We believe that anyway. I think that. And certainly. And boy, they were the ones who <laughs> allowed that. Hear those voices. Ooh, they were the ones allowed to see that glorious sight. And it was a glorious sight. Oh, what joy they had. Uh, 
I thought about uh, the Reverend John, I got a little story here on the Reverend John Newton. You remember him? He wrote that Amazing Grace. <clears throat> uh, but he was uh, called to visit a Christian family one time. And they had just suffered the loss of everything they had. It was a big fire had come through and burned their home up and everything that they had. And uh, the, the, the reading, the little story says he found the pious mistress. In other words, she was a Christian, she was a believer, and she was uh, very pious in the Lord. So he found the pious mistress, mistress and said, I give you joy, madam. Surprised and ready to be offend, offended, she exclaimed, what joy? That all my property is consumed? He said, oh no. But joy that you have so much more property that fire can't touch you. Ooh, I tell you, just got to look at it the right way, friend. You and I own a piece of land over there. They can't touch it. And if you lose everything you got here, you got more over there. The Bible says we're heirs and what? Join that. Christ. And so he straightened her out right quick. So you don't know, have we just, It's kind of a, a way you're looking at things. And you can look and say, I just lost everything I had. No way, man. I got more over there. I ain't worried about it. <laughs> and God will build that back if you need something. You know, he'll help you. Oh, my friend. Oh, Brother John knew, he knew something about that. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. And we made that statement a while ago. Luke 12, 15. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't uh, no, it's not in what you have. Not in things. Uh, those things will, uh, first thing you know, we talk about the payment coming due, but what about after you get it paid for? You know, it's going to start rusting. It's going to start looking bad. It's going to, you know, a car or anything else you have there. Oh, no. It doesn't, our joy doesn't rest on material things. And this Christmas, if you get something for Christmas and you get a present, that'll be just thank the Lord for it. Be glad. If you don't get much, remember you still got the Savior. You still got the joy of the Lord that it brings. And that goes 65, 365 days a year. Amen. Except leap year, 366. Every day of the year, you can have joy with Jesus. You really can. He brought real joy. Doesn't rest in material things. All our spiritual possessions, those are, listen, if you start adding them up, you can't, you can't even put a price on those. What kind of price are you going to put on eternal life? Amen. I got that. Amen. Got that one. Eternal life. What about a helper? We talked about that paraclete the other night. Huh? How about a helper? Call alongside to help you. That's what he is. He's our helper. Every time you need a help, you, you got somebody. And, and on and on, the comforter, the helper, the paraclete. So let's rejoice this Christmas season. And, and let's just rejoice all through the year. Uh, the song we sing, Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart rejoice. Let every heart rejoice. Rejoice not just at Christmas time. Rejoice all year long. And then the third thing that I have here, he not only brings light and not only brings joy, great, great joy, but thirdly, he brings peace. Look at verse 14. He said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Have you ever seen so much time and effort and money and things spent on peace? I mean, the, the world leaders are always trying to, to, to have this country, to make peace with this country. And uh, all we said the other day, Russia's now <laughs> on the border there. They, they're getting ready to do something there in Ukraine and uh, probably will. But anyway, hope they don't. But that's not going to be as long as somebody's greedy and covetous and wants somebody else's property or wants somebody else's country or, you know, uh, there's not going to be peace. Jesus didn't come to bring that kind of peace when he said, uh, on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Now, one day there will be peace, goodwill toward men, but not in this, this dispensation that we're in, not in this time. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 uh, says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. And that last name is the Prince of Peace. And that's true. 
But the peace that he's talking about is peace in your heart. Jesus came to bring peace in people's hearts. Uh, it's not given to the world right now, just to the saved. If you want peace, you can have peace with God. If you are uh, watching or li listening and, and, and you don't have peace in your heart, you don't have the salvation, then you can ask Jesus, receive him today. And the Prince of Peace will come in your heart and you will have peace. Uh, millions of dollars. And sometimes people spend their whole life trying to find peace in, on the earth and just never find it. You're not going to find it in that way. Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. He says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he came, so that we could have peace with him. Peace with him. And then after you have the peace with him, and we've used this before, these two verses, I, like, I love to use them together. Philippians 4, 7 says, And the peace of God, which patteth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. In other words, it'll keep, guard, it'll guard your heart and mind. It really will. The peace of God. After you get peace with God, then you can have the peace of God. But until you have that, you're going to be in misery and uh, just uh, horrible things that are happening in this world right now. I'm glad I don't know the half of them. I, I really am. God knows them all. Uh, and I think about what little bit I know and what little bit the world, you know, and the news media wants to, to dish out there. And it's all bad news. Uh, I remember years ago, uh, I don't remember it personally because I wasn't saved back then, but uh, many years ago they would put the, the sermon of one of the local pastors on the front page of the newspaper. That was some good news. People could read it and, and even get saved off of that. Boy, not today. You wouldn't see them putting that on there. They wouldn't even put it on the back page. They wouldn't let you put it in the warn ads. <laughs> they wouldn't let you pay for it and put it in there. But they used to put it on the front page. Wow. That was the day when Jesus was honored and magnified and glorified in our country. Boy, not so today. Not so today. I'm afraid we're a heathen nation now. And I'm sorry to say that. I wish it were not so. I'm praying God will bring us back. Yeah. He, he's able. It was already mentioned there a while ago. In fact, we had Ephesians chapter 3 there this morning. He's able to see abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Even think of. So he could do that. He could not do that. And uh, if he chooses to, I'm praying that he will. I'd like to see a revival one more time. I really would. But on the other hand, I look at it and say, nevertheless, Lord, your will be done. Because I want to tell you something. We're 2,000 years past Jesus. And that's about all the time we got. If you look sure. at prophecy, 6,000 years or 7,000 years is going to be the millennium. Amen. And we're beyond that. God's so merciful. We, we've already went over it. You say, well, we've already passed that. What's going on? Yeah, God's just merciful. Just like leaving the door open seven more days in the ark, you know, when he put, put them in there, he left it a little longer, let somebody get in. Or he's leaving a little longer, let somebody get in. But I tell you, we're about out of time. Please, Christian, let's wake up. Let's wake up and get up and do something for him. Let's, let's try to win somebody to Jesus. Let's pray them across the bar. Let's, uh, that song we sing, uh, we, we might guide somebody across the bar, somebody to salvation. Oh, my friend, uh, listen, peace is not going to find any other way. John chapter 14 and verse 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. In other words, God's peace is inside. It's inside. If you, and many of you know this, I knew this when I first got saved because several of my family members were not... Many of them have gotten saved now. A lot of them have. But at that time, they weren't many of them saved. And I'll tell you something. When I went home, it was, <laughs> listen, there's a difference. If you've got family members that's not saved, hmm? in your own household, it will be the vision. it will be the vision. They really won't like you to hang around too long. They're afraid you're going to talk to them about Jesus. <laughs> and I found that out. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. <laughs> Isn't that what's going on now? The sword's all over the place. People fighting, and scratching, and want what somebody else has got. And even countries and nations trying to take over somebody else's country and nation. Oh, my friend, if people in your family are lost, you'll notice the difference. 
I'm still praying for Bob's family. He, he was praying when he was here for mine. And we all got family members that are lost, don't we? And we need to pray. Oh, God. You know what God's wanting? He's not wanting peacemakers. He's wanting peace takers. <laughs> he wants peace takers. Amen. You can take his peace. You can have it today. You can receive him. He said that as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You can be saved today. You just call on Jesus. Amen. Repenting of your sins. Asking him to save you. That if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. And then verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved today. Oh, my friend. Peace has been made. It's already been made. It's just yours for the taking. We need peace takers. You need to reach out and take. Receive the gift of His love. Receive the gift of salvation. In fact, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 and verse 36, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, watch this, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That's it. We need to preach peace by Jesus Christ. That's the only way we'll find peace. It's the only way. Uh, the question is, will men give up trying to make peace? Probably not. Talking about the leaders of our nations, and the leaders of other nations. They think they can, but they, they will never make it. But one day the Prince of Peace is coming back. And uh, he's coming back to the church next. The rapture of the church. And it'll be seven years of tribulation. Three and a half of tribulation, three and a half of great tribulation. Then he's coming back. He's going to chain the devil for a thousand years. And you and I are going to live in this place. Perfect, perfect. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be wonderful when Jesus rules and reigns. Yeah. It'll be perfect. He'll rule and reign from Jerusalem. What a wonderful thought. And there will be peace. He will rule with a rod of iron. Oh, my friend, you won't have to rule you and I with a rod of iron. There'll still be people being born in this time for that thousand years. At the end of which, Satan will be loosed and he'll give him an army. Can you imagine after they ruling? Jesus has ruled for a thousand years and they've sat under it. Now, some of them will still follow the devil. Boy, man's heart is wicked, isn't it? Man's born in sin. Oh, my friend. And you and I, of course, will be ruling and reigning with him, helping and doing whatever he signs us to do. What a blessing that will be. Oh, my friend. But the question is, will men give up trying to make peace and come as a broken-hearted pen? Boy, when I came, I didn't come with any, I didn't, I didn't come with any anything I had. I didn't mean, bring nothing that I could recommend me. And the only thing I could recommend me is I'm a sinner lost on my way to hell. I'm, you're the one I came for. Uh, you're the one I came for, Jesus said. So, praise God. And I'm telling you, He came for you. He came for all of us. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. So all can be saved. I think it'd be a great Christmas gift to Jesus for somebody to just get saved today, you know, and right at Christmas time, think about that time. Just give your heart to Him. That would be a wonderful gift, and He would love to have that. But oh, my friend, uh, will you come like that or will you just continue in unbelief and perish forever? Quite a, quite a question. It's quite a decision. Uh, I think it's the greatest decision I ever made 53 years ago. I asked Jesus in my heart. And I recommend him. He's never failed me one time. I, I want to tell you, he's been the Savior that he said he would be and, and done exceeding above and no more than, more than ever I have ever been able to ask or think. Oh, more than I could ever dream he's done for me. And if you'll let him, he'll do it for you. He really will. Oh, my friend. Let's, let's have an invitation. we got an invitation home home here. Yeah, we can have one. And just go ahead and play it. It'll be fine. And I want to invite you this morning. If you're here, you can come. Maybe you'll have somebody to pray for. Of course, if anybody here, we don't want to take it for granted. It needs the Lord. You speak to me as you go by and 
But if you've got somebody you want to pray for, maybe America, you just want to come and pray for America, what needs prayer? Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Pastor Billy Balcom. For more information about New Beginning Baptist Church and our ministries, please visit our website at www.nbbc280.org. If you have any questions about our church or comments about this video, please use the contact page on our website or send an email to crane.t at nbbc280.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace for today and bright hope for tomorrow.